API recommended practice 576 pressure relieving devices PRD in this module you shall learn about various PRDs PRDs usage and limitations inspection and testing and some sample question as well as some potential exam question highlighted in this module, we shall briefly explain pressure relieving devices because only a couple of questions are expected from this recommended practice in the exam and hence you need not spend much time on it. Peruse through it and look at the pictures, the actual document, please. Chapter 3 explains the terms and definitions while Chapter 4 describes various safety and relief valves. We have selected some videos so you can visualize how the safety and relief valves work. Some highlights are brought below. A safety valve is normally used for compressible fluids or gases such as steam boiler. So safety valve is for gases. Safety valves are not fit for service in corrosive service. And safety valve is something that pop up suddenly because <coughs> The gases can't be under pressure for too long, otherwise there is a danger of explosion and failure. So safety valve nature is to pop up immediately once the pressure is. A relief valve is a spring-loaded device that's intended for liquid service. Safety relief valve can be used as a relief valve that is for either compressible or incompressible medium. So this might be a potential question. Safety valve for compressible, relief valve for incompressible or liquid service. So safety valve is for gas, relief valve is for liquid. While a safety relief valve can be used either way. The rupture discs are held between specially made flanges and designed to rupture at predetermined pressure. It does not reclose after rupture. Rupture disc can be used in combination with a relief valve to protect it from corrosive fluid that corrodes or fouls the relief valve. In actuated devices or non-reclosing pressure relief devices, they tend to break and the valve remain open after pressure release. Chapter five, the poor performance of valve is mainly due to corrosion. So this can be a potential question. What is the uh, cause of poor performance of valve? And it's mainly due to corrosion. For example, valve seat may corrode and cause leaking or deposits may accumulate and cause galling or sticking of sit and disc thereby preventing the valve from opening when the set pressure is reached there can also be external corrosion due to environment there might be pitting corrosion due to impingement of contaminants or tiny vapor bubbles chatter is rapid open and closure of valves and as a hammering effect on the seat causing damage and subsequent leakage. So seating surfaces can be managed by frequent operation of valve close to the operating pressure. So one of the reasons of chatter is when the valve is set close to operating pressure to open. Them need to be inspected for straightness Failed springs are almost always caused by corrosion. Corrosion can be prevented by coating the spring or isolating it from process fluid by billows or using an appropriate material that can withstand the process, heat, uh, corrosion and stress. The main cause of improper valve setting is incorrect calibration of pressure gauges Gauges shall be calibrated using a dead weight tester. Rupture disc at the inlet or outlet of the valve may help prevent corrosion. So one of the uses of rupture disc is to prevent the flow 
to go into the spring and stem the back of the ball so to help prevent corrosion. Pressure relief valves should be secured and shipped in a vertical position. Valve inlets and outlets should be covered to avoid damaging the flange faces during transportation because flange face is very important and it can cause leaking after installation. Heavy valves shall be lifted by their lifting lock and not by the head lever spindle because that would damage the valve. For big valves, there is a different lifting lock for the head and there is a, another lifting lock for the whole valve. So you can see a spring-loaded valve here. Chapter 6, Inspection and Testing. Normally, outlet flange rating of pressure relief valves is less than the set pressure. For this reason, inlet valve shall be closed and the pressure relief valve should be vented before outlet valve is closed or blinded. Valve tag shall allow the set pressure, the valve company number, valve equipment number to which it belongs, cold differential test pressure, CDTP. CDTP pressure is a pressure at which the pressure relief valve is adjusted to open on the test stand. The cold differential test pressure includes corrections for the service condition of back pressure or temperature or both. A small continuous stream of water from the bulb discharge usually indicates attainment uh, reaching the or reaching the CDTP. Pressure relief valves do not pop at inlet pressure of 150% of CDTP shall should be considered a stock shot. So if it is 150%, still it's closed, we call it a stock shot. As per API 588. 581, if a relief valve that does not pop at 130% of the set pressure is considered failure to open, if the valve does not pop at 150%, is classified as stuck shut. Valve inspection includes body wall thickness measurement. High back pressure may be due to downstream restrictions that are created by deposits or to higher relief flows than used in the original design. For pressure relief valves that comply with ASME BPVC Section 8, Division 1, Paragraph UG 125, the deviation shall not be less than 0% or greater than 10%. So it should open uh, not less than the 0%, that means the maximum allowable working pressure, and not greater than 1.1% 1.1 1 times of the maximum allowable working pressure. So it should not open before the pressurized container reach the maximum allowable working pressure, that's 0%. And then plus 10%, that's 1.1 times. For closed system, the valve should be back pressure tested to check for leakage. So there is no backflow of the fluid. Lift assist test method, as the name suggests, is lifting the valve, simulating the top pressure test. And there is a video here that you could see that shows how it is done. Please note that this method shall not be substituted as a routine test for valve integrity, as this test only verifies that the valve pop at a set pressure, and that's it. It does not verify that the valve is leakage free at 90% of set pressure, nor verifies inlet and outlet nozzle condition of valves as the test is in situ. That means uh, it's outside the, it, it is as it is, without removing the valve for bench test. Lift assist test method is only used for direct acting spring loaded valves. It is recommended that the pilot valve be removed for maintenance since actuation of pilot mechanism does not necessarily mean that the main relief piston will actuate. Pressure and or vacuum vent valves on atmospheric tanks are designed to vent air and vapor from the tank during 
filling operation and to admit air when the tank is drawn. Ruptured disc devices fail due to fatigue, corrosion, or installation. Ruptured discs cannot be non-destructively tested and should be replaced on a regular schedule based on their application. Pressure relief valve on a stream inspection is a visual inspection to ensure that nothing is corroded or fouled, levers are working, pins not broken, no leaking observed, and the tag is in place and complies with the recording pressure. Inspection frequency is maximum five years for normal service and 10 years for clean environment. So this can be a potential question. What's the inspection frequency for normal service or for clean service? Records and reports are verification tools to demonstrate that the pressure relief valves meet the expected requirements, drawings are needed for dimensional check. So obviously, uh, to check it against the drawing to see if it is within the tolerances. Should be clear who is responsible for preparing, maintaining, updating, and distributing the reports and records within the organization. That should be part of QA manual of the valves. Appendix A describes a typical block for bench test procedure and Appendix B exhibits the forms for test reports and records and we recommend that you go through with them. A few questions here. Which of the following may be installed on the inlet or outlet of a pressure valve to provide added corrosion protection of the valve internals? We talk about this a couple of times. It's a rupture disc. Rupture disc device that protect the relief valve against system fluids. Which of these is not a cause of damage relief valve seats in refinery service? So careless handling, corrosion and foreign particles, improper or lengthy piping to valve inlet that cause valve chattering. So this can all damage the relief valves. Undersized valves that close abruptly resulting in disclosal surface damage. So you have to uh, see that this might look uh, like a reasonable uh, reason for damage to relief valves. Answer B, but you, can, you have to be careful that uh, what is the cause of damage relief valve seats. A rapid cycle of opening and closing subjecting to relief valve seating surfaces to severe hammering that sometimes damages the seat surfaces beyond repair is called chattering. It keeps on closing and opening. So you have to use the correct answer for the correct term. Leakage past relief valve seating surfaces causing seat damage by erosion is called wire drawing. This was also in the API 576. Each of these statements is true regarding the causes of failed springs in refinery relief valves. So uh, springs always caused by corrosion, failed springs. So you have to see uh, here it says by high temperature, by stress corrosion cracking, by fatigue failure. This might be partly true, but they might not be always the valves in hydrogen sulfide situation. So it's always corrosion. This is a better answer. Always an choose the best answer. When selecting the appropriate spring material, which of these factors are not the most important for materials to prevent stress corrosion cracking refinery relief valves? So strength, hardness, heat treatment, stability uh, is not the most important one because he's talking about stress corrosion cracking. Uh, prevent stress corrosion cracking. 
during relief valve testing using air or bottled nitrogen, what does the inspector carefully listen for to determine that the set pressure has reached? So a constant, you know, hissing or noise or a audible leak followed up by this thing pop. So this is the most appropriate again answer. This is uh, B is better answer than C because this is more complete that eventually after hissing, you know, like a pressure cooker, it suddenly pops. When testing relief valves, the relief valve term blow down refers to difference between set and closing pressure. So once the valve is open and it's going to close, so that's the term blow down. Term used related to sticking of the disc in the relief valve when foreign particles in the guiding surfaces tend to roll the metal up. That's called galling, sticking, valve damage is all of the following problems except so you can see lifting levers maybe damage or change in set pressure remember that the set pressure might be wrong so um, gauges not calibrated pressure gauges internal or external leakage can occur when the valve is in service that happens uh, this is like the least uh, problem actually, froze in service and failed to perform its function. It's too vague and failed. And uh, when rough handling can occur. So remember, uh, I've seen a lot of valves being damaged during shipment, maintenance or installation, especially shipment, uh, valves lifted by their lever, uh, by their or the lifting log of the head and then it was damaged and it can happen during also maintenance and installation. The handling, he's talking about handling, not service. So it's when the human intervention is involved. Pressure relief valves should be shipped in what manner? In upright position. So remember, upright position should be when it is, should be because then the stem and seats, they keep, they're not stable. So it should be in upright position. Which of the these provides seat loading to keep the pressure relief valve tightly closed? So after it's open, again, that's another type of the uh, question previously asked. Blow down, so it closes it. Blow down means closing it. It comes to a pressure where the valve, uh, the spring um, comes back into action and press the valve against the seat and closes it down. The principle reason for inspecting a pressure, pressure relief valve is to determine if it's functioning properly. So this is the best answer. It's not prevent falling or to assure equipment safety by preventing overpressurization. It's not by preventing to assure personal safety. So this might be partially true, but this is the best answer again. Thank you.